Welcome to the Sellernomics Podcast, sharing valuable tips and information in the Amazon and e-commerce space. Each week, we deliver the best interviews with some of the top Amazon personalities in the industry to help you grow your business. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. And now, here is your host, Rob Stanley. Hey everyone, Rob Stanley here, and we got a great one today. Our special holiday edition of Sellernomics. I've got two great people coming on the podcast. I got Kevin King and Yoni Mazur coming on. We're going to be talking today about holiday season failure or success for Amazon sellers. That's a big topic and a lot to talk about. Let's get them into the room here. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. How you doing, Rob? Good. What's going on, everybody? How you doing, Yoni? You're good, Kevin. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, uh, Rob. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anybody who's uh, listening in right now, feel free to post questions as you go. Or if you have any comments, we'd love to hear them. Hit that like and that thumbs up. But let's get it started. So, Kevin, uh, let's go with the most immediate announcement I just heard yesterday. And this was kind of a very unusual one uh, that Amazon decided to start building their own uh, containers. And I was like, OK, that kind of kind of makes sense. And I'm kind of thinking in my head, does that mean... They may lead to actually doing their own shipping, <laughs> like actual on a ship, cargo ship is what I mean. Obviously, they do their own shipping. What's well, they, your thoughts on that, Kevin? Yeah, they, they've been doing that since like 2017. It's called Dragon. The nickname of it's Dragon Boat. And it's primarily for Chinese-based sellers. So all the people that uh, we compete against, uh, they're helping them out uh, since 2017. And they've been doing that. Uh, but they were they were just contracting with other shipping lines. And uh, it was just, you know, whatever containers came in with those shipping lines, and they were coordinating that whole logistics. Uh, but yeah, just earlier this year, they actually started making their own uh, 53 foot containers, uh, which are a little bit the longer ones. Uh, and uh, you know, it has that big Amazon with the, the smile logo and everything on the side. And uh, they're bringing in entire ship pools of those. Uh, they're, they're, they're renting out to, or leasing out some of these, these ships and bringing in complete ships. I think uh, maybe what you saw, there might've been one that came into the port of Houston. Uh, I believe it was, uh, that was offloading an entire ship of, uh, Amazon containers. So they're smaller ships. Um, so they can't contain, you know, the, the biggest container ships, I think can take about 20,000, uh, containers or so, uh, 40 foot, uh, 20, 20 foot containers, the equivalent of 20,000. So if they're bigger, you know, it's, you got to half that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so they're bringing in, uh, on, on some smaller ships, a uh, thousand, 2000 container ships, some, some of their own stuff. And then my understanding is. Some of those containers are not going back to uh, to to China. They 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 deliberately made them 53 foot, so that they can then turn those containers into the backs of put them on trucks here and use them uh, on trucking instead of buying the trucking trailers that mm -hmm. you see the big semis pull. That the 53 foot is a standard for the big size uh, trucking rig here in the U.S. So they're just putting them on the road and then using them domestically, not even sending them back, a lot of them back. Uh, so I think it's pretty smart. I mean Amazon logistically has become one, one of the biggest players out there. You know, four or five years ago, they were shipping everything through FedEx and UPS and, and the U.S. mail. And I remember even when, uh, probably about 2016, 2017, all of a sudden I started getting deliveries on a Sunday from the U.S. mail. And I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. The post office doesn't work on Sundays. And it was they were delivering, they contracted with Amazon to actually deliver uh, packages. And then UPS all of a sudden started, they didn't used to ship, deliver on Saturdays. Or FedEx didn't deliver on the weekend unless you paid, you know, a ten twenty dollar premium, some sort of premium on the shipment for specifically for those days. But now it's pretty standard seven days a week you're getting uh, getting deliveries, uh, and a lot of that's because of Amazon. And Amazon has now become one of the biggest logistics players. I think they ship more than FedEx now, uh, handle more logistics, ground logistics, and air logistics than FedEx. Not not quite up to UPS, but they're, they're approaching it. So that, it's huge. It's amazing how fast. That they've they've been able to do this yeah that what's amazing is they did this in like five six years fedex is like what 70 years 60 years it's just unbelievable yeah, yeah it, it's it's crazy uh I mean, I mean that's amazon is is a, a brilliant logistics company i mean from the the, the way they handle all this the, their warehouses and setting everything up to be able to handle all these shipments and it, it's it's amazing it's mind-boggling how, how how whoever created the system uh it's, it's pretty mind-boggling pretty smart people Kevin, yeah, definitely you, partnering, yeah. Yeah, so Kevin, do you feel with them maybe trying to make some of these changes? I know you talk to the sellers, Yoni talks to the sellers, and he can chime in after this. Are you seeing that, I mean, 
we were only talking like maybe a couple of months ago, there was a lot of delays, a lot of issues. Uh, you know, obviously some things happened in place with, uh, I think some of the ports like Long Beach started going to 24 seven, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, but are you, have you seen since some of those little changes like that, have things picked up a little bit as far as getting product into the warehouses for yeah, sellers? They, yeah. They went to 24 seven, which helps some, but then they also implemented some fines and penalties. And that I think was a bigger motivator where, uh, if they were offloading this stuff and getting them out, it's like a hundred bucks a day or. I don't know the exact amount. There, there's some fines that kind of uh, lit a fire under some of these companies to get get their acting uh, together. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I personally, we had a problem. Uh, we had a, a shipment sent over for one of my companies um, that that came through Long Beach. It, it cleared through Long Beach back in uh, like uh, early June, and they got, got put on a rail uh, to Chicago because our three PL is in St. Louis, so it got sent by rail to Chicago, and arrived late June, early July to Chicago rail yard to get cleared out there. We just got got it uh, Monday. Wow! Six, six months, almost six months later, it was stuck in the Chicago rail yard. There was about eighty thousand containers stuck in the Chicago rail yard, and there's a, a litany of uh, excuses from we don't have people, it's COVID issues, uh, you know, there's mechanical problem, whatever. There's a, a ton of problem it, uh, complaints, and we just got this. It killed our entire summer season. We had a product for the summer season on this. It, it, it killed it. So now we have it. And it's out of season. Um, but at least, at least we have it. We kept kind of almost written it off. And I, I'm, I'm hearing some other stuff is moving a little bit, a little bit quicker. You know, if you recall last year, uh, there was like a shipping Armageddon, uh, with all kinds of delays with FedEx and UPS and the U S post office, especially, you know, priority packages last Christmas were supposed to be two, three, four day delivery. Uh, they were taking a week to 10 days to, to, to two weeks sometimes just for, they were so understaffed. And I remember uh, I, I do some drops here at the local uh, post office at the back, you know, I go to the back where all the trucks and the, everything are. And I remember last year is just a cluster F back there. I mean, it was yeah. just a, a disaster. And this year it's, it's seems to be, they got their act together. They, they figured out some problems. And I think that's generally the case. Uh, I mean, yesterday we had the outage, uh, you know, with a AWS outage and that caused some, some problems. Uh, with with Amazon deliveries and with a bunch of other stuff too, phone systems and all kinds of things. But um, I think it's much better this year. I think they're better prepared. Yeah, Yoni, what have you seen on on? You know, I know I know Yoni was he covered a couple of trade shows prior to uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Uh, what were you hearing any buzz on anything regarding shipping like that, Yoni, uh, or issues that were happening, or was it starting to get better? Yeah, there was stress all around. Uh, uh, people were anxious about it, uh, especially the one you know sourcing from overseas. Actually, the one that were sourcing domestically, you know, if they're the supplements or uh, food or snacks, they're actually they're fine. They're uh, you know U.S. manufacturing and and sourcing is uh, pretty stable, uh, so they were in a good position. But yeah, a lot of stress. But the thing is, when Black Friday, Cyber Monday kind of kicked in, I tried to kind of ask around. It seemed that the overwhelming the majority of them were settled properly. Some of them mentioned that they wish they had more stock. And some of them were completely out of stock and basically had a, it took a big hit, but the overwhelming majority were fine. So the anxiety, there was one stage, the, 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 the actual results so far is that it's fine. But listen, this is only December 8th. We got what, a week or two, or two weeks before Christmas. So these next two weeks will be uh, kind of um, a very, very interesting uh, point to see, uh, how, you know, how, uh, the, when the race ends, so to speak, you know, how if, if, if sellers had enough inventory and ammunition in, in their arsenal, uh, to, to get by and really maximize on sales. So we're in a very dramatic moment at this point. I think you're yeah. seeing too, part of what's helping is it's, I think the holidays are more evened out this year. It started a little bit earlier with people buying uh, because they heard stories about shelves going to be empty and stuff like that. So they wanted to make sure they got what they, they really wanted. Uh, and then I'm seeing, at least in my sales, you know, Black Friday wasn't a big spike. And, and I think uh, um, I heard some, some reports that it might have actually been down slightly a little bit. Uh, this yeah, year. it's first time in history ever that uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday were actually lower than the previous year. So Do you, well, hold on. Here's a question, though. Here's a question. A lot of them started their Black Friday sales earlier, though. Yeah, that's why. That's why I mean everything's more evened out. A lot of people. Are yeah. Trying, a lot of retailers are trying uh, to to space it out so it's not just jammed. I mean, obviously. This lap, that Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend was jammed. My, my condo place here, the mail room is just full of packages. I mean, you can't even walk in there. Uh, there's so many packages. Uh, but um, 
And I, I know my mailman yesterday, uh, I was talking to him, just a local guy, and he's like, yeah, we've had to make three package runs today. Three guys have had to come out just because we couldn't fit them all in the truck. So, but, but they're handling it. Uh, and I'm seeing that in my sales. My sales, you know, actually my sales are higher right now the, since Black Friday, uh, actually since Cyber Monday, every day the sales have gone up a little bit slightly or, or been about the same. And, and they're higher. All of those days are higher than Black Friday. That's why a lot of people, you know, before before the holidays started, people were, I was on a few podcasts like, hey, what's your tips for uh, what's your strategy for Black Friday? What, what are you doing special? You put some special graphics on your images. You're doing this. You're doing some sort of sales. Like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any sale. I'm not doing any promotion because every day is a Black Friday uh, from here on out uh, or better. Uh, and so I didn't do anything, even on my own websites where uh, outside of Amazon, where consumers are buying directs. You know, in the past, I would run Black Friday deals. I would send out an email. Sometimes I do five days of Black Friday. Okay, this day, it's a 20% discount. Order this day, you get some sort of free gift. You order the next day, it's you know, something free shipping or whatever. And I do all these things. And this year, I did nothing. And sales are up 20, 30% despite that. And wow. why give away that money and do those promotions if you don't need to? Yeah. It's funny you mention that. So as a buyer, right? Because I haven't sold in a while. But as a buyer, I had a bunch of things bookmarked in my list and everything. And I was like, okay, I'm going to wait. Wait till Cyber Monday. See if they go on sale or Black Friday. I would say probably of the 10 things, only maybe three or four actually went on sale. Like everything else, the price stayed the same. It yeah. didn't change. Uh, probably because it was also like more brand name, higher end things. But I did notice even some of the non-brand name didn't really change. They didn't really do a discount. So that was interesting. Yeah, I think a part of that, just to butt in here, is that think about it. If, if so many sellers have struggled to source their products, why would they give it away? Especially with the, so much momentum. If it was just a regular year, you have endless supply, technically speaking, because you always, you know, ring up the factory and within a few weeks get a reload. And today's not that simple. That's why you got to be a bit more careful with your ammunition, right? Yeah, supply and demand. I mean, it's and the prices are up. I think I, I just saw some other report that prices are up on Amazon. Uh, someone did a study in 25 percent in, in general. Inflation, uh, baby, inflation. Yeah, it's an inflation <laughs> cost being passed along. Uh, I haven't felt that personally. You know, I uh, I luckily I'm I'm somebody that doesn't pay close attention to price. You know, when I'm in the grocery store. If I want it, I put it in my cart. I'm not like, okay, this one's a dollar ninety nine, this one's a dollar eighty seven. Let me put the dollar eighty seven. I don't. I'm not. I that, used to. I'll be honest. Full I'm disclosure. I used to. Throw it in. Yeah, coming to America from another country at the early years, that was like that. Every little penny, I was kind of very, uh, you know, careful with. But over time, as I was able to, you know, develop a career and do business, and thankfully financially be, you know, good, I value my time. You know, that little time that takes me to think if it's a penny here or there. I can be out of the supermarket and making money and you know the business world. So I'm, I'm very lucky and I'm blessed to be in this country, you know? So so Kevin, you brought up the whole thing with like uh obviously prices going up on Amazon. Uh speculating ahead a little bit, uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, going back to the whole shipping with containers and everything. They they just keep seem to keep going up. They keep going up. What's yeah, your well, feel? Kind of stabilized right now. Um okay. it, it dropped slightly. Uh, but the people that I'm talking to. Uh, you know, like Steve Simonson and other people that are bringing in a lot more containers than I am, uh, way more, you know, they seem to think that it's going to stay pretty, it's going to stay high for a while. It, it may dip a little bit, but um, at least until 2023, and, and, and it may never go back to where it was. You know, if a container was two, three thousand bucks, uh, you know, there's additional fees on top of that. So when you, someone says it is two or three thousand dollars to ship a container, you know, you got paperwork fees and you got duties and you got other stuff. So it costs actually more than that actually to bring a container in once you factor in all the little costs. But still, uh, from from three grand to 20, 25, 30 grand in some cases, I've heard stories of. Um, I, I think it's going to probably uh, not not likely to go under 10 grand anytime soon. You know, it may, it may go up and down, it may stay stable. But the feeling I'm getting from a lot of people is they expect it to remain remain higher. Why, why would the shipping, if they can get it, why would, it's the same thing we just talked about on Black Friday. Why, why do a discount if you don't need to? And, and so they don't need to. Um, and so what's happening is big companies like Amazon, it's not just Amazon, you got uh, Nike and um, uh, Kohl's and Walmart, they're all chartering their own ships and stuff and doing their own containers uh, to, to bypass some of this, these problems as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, though, we're going to talk more about holiday season failures or success for Amazon sellers. Uh, we'll touch on Walmart a little bit. Uh, I'd like to hear uh, some opinions on that. We got some questions coming in. Keep those coming in right after this quick break. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. Yeah, so be sure to head on over to gatita.com forward slash sellernomics, get that $400 in free FBA reimbursements. Uh, so we do have a, a question, a couple of questions coming in. Uh, so Kevin, uh, it says, uh, thank you for the stream. Took some advice back in the pandemic at ASGTG show. It's been good. Uh, I think they said they were supposed to say some things you are doing for ranking or originally at launch. So it looked like maybe you, uh, had given some advice or something about some ranking. Uh, yeah, maybe something back in the pre-pandemic. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I spoke at AS, uh, GTG a, a few okay. years back, uh, and so maybe I shared some strategies there that uh, that he's saying that uh, that worked. And now nice. they ask, is there some other uh, other stuff that I'm doing with ranking right? Now? Yeah, it's probably because of the whole uh, you know crackdown on search five buy and you know rebates and how do you know you you spike up the uh, um, you know the ranking. So he's asking organically if there's a uh, basically what are you doing right now for ranking? If there's anything yeah. special you can share with us. Um, yeah, I mean, as most of you know, the search find by uh, that most people are doing it, it's been basically uh, uh, frowned upon and, uh, and outlawed by Amazon. That doesn't mean people weren't still doing it, um, but and they're they're adjusting uh, the way they're doing it. Uh, I don't recommend that. You know, you're you're going against the terms of service and you're just playing with fire. But there are people that uh, are, are still doing. They just made a few changes. Um, I know a lot of software companies have taken away their many chat flows, their search find by flows that you know that had those some of those those companies. Uh, so it's it's cleaning up a lot of a lot of stuff, but there's still a lot of ways to rank uh, on Amazon. Um, and the way that uh, I'm recommending uh, that most people do it is is lowering the price. So if the way I recommend is if your your price is 20 bucks for your item, uh, come out with a dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine, something crazy low, and then run heavy PPC, top of search PPC, uh, and and do it that way. Now, and because the reason for that, and you don't need reviews. People will take a gamble on something that's two or three bucks without reviews, but they won't take a gamble yeah. on it's twenty bucks. Uh, so they, they they might take a gamble on it. So they're they're much more willing to, to try your product with zero reviews, and then you just work your way up on the price. It's the same strategy I did like in 2015, 2016. Back then there was, you know, you could actually write and get people to buy your product and write a review, and as long as they posted a disclaimer and a whole different set of rules. And I remember it was October third, twenty sixteen, when Amazon put the hammer down on the old rank. So it, it's constantly evolving, but a, a, lo a lower price and then slowly raise it up over time. And you got to make sure you put your minimum and your maximum price settings in your account. Otherwise, you may lose the buy box as you're changing the price. Uh, but if you do that, um, I think you can have great success. And yeah, you're going to lose money on every single sale. Uh, but if you're doing search, find, buy and doing rebates, you're paying fees and, and losing money anyway. It's just a cost of doing business, a uh, cost of getting in the door. And, and I recommend most people don't start with the big keywords. Um, Title density right now is something that a lot of people, Bradley at Helium 10 has talked about this on, the, on his podcast and, and done a couple of blog posts on it. But title, it's a new feature that's in Helium 10. Uh, it's a, it'll tell you the title density. And what that basically means is how many people are using your exact keyword phrase that you're targeting in their title. So if my, my keyword is, uh, is uh, uh, what's a, uh, garlic, uh, garlic, uh, garlic, pressed, uh, for, garlic pressed for Christmas. Uh, let's say that's my keyword, four words, garlic press for Christmas. And how many people are using that exact phrase, garlic press for Christmas, in that exact order? Not just those words sprinkled in the title, but in exact order in their title that are showing up on page one. And it's typically, it depends on the category. Page one can be 24, 50, 40, 50, up to 60 products. So typically go about 60 deep. How many people are using that exact phrase in their title? And that's called title density. And the fewer that are doing that, I like to see less than six. The fewer that are doing that, the better the chance you have to rank on that page, even from day one in some cases. Uh, the more people that are doing that, the more competitive it's going to be. So if you can find keywords that are, have low search volume, 300, 500, less than 1,000, and start there on your launch. And, and make sure you have in your title, you have all the big keywords. If there's some keyword that has 50,000 searches a month, make sure you have that in your title uh, so you get a little bit of credit for it for every sale. But then target the ones that have 300, 500 that are, that are much uh, lower line fruit that don't have a lot of competitors that have title density that that were so you find the ones that those keywords that are relevant to your product that don't have a lot of compete, competitors with that keyword in the title and a lot of times you can get to page one really quick and you're not going to make you know hundreds of sales and, and get rich overnight 
but you can slowly build this up over two, three, four, five, six months to page one for almost everything if you do it right. And start with those keywords and work your way up to the bigger keywords. And the good thing about the smaller keywords, they usually have a higher conversion rate. So a keyword that has 20,000 searches a month, maybe only 5% of the people that search that keyword end up buying something off of that, off of that search result. They, they end up going around and going down different rabbit holes versus a keyword that's very targeted, only 300 or 500, it's very niche. And the, the keyword conversion, the conversions on those can be 40, 50% in some cases. So you can still get a track up a lot of sales um, by doing that. You're not going to have the huge sales. Uh, you know, 5% of 20,000 is, is a lot more than, uh, than 40% of 300, but you can start there and, and build up. And that, that's how I'm recommending most people launch. Yeah, no, that's good information. And, you know, one thing I do want to cover, but uh, real quick, we got a quick shout out from uh, Danon. Danon, I'll see you in a couple of days in uh, Miami. Thanks for uh, tuning in with Kevin and I. If you got any good questions, be sure to throw them up there. Uh, but uh, Kevin, so I had Carrie Miller on from Helium 10 a couple of weeks ago, and she was showing me the Walmart tool. Mm -hmm. And one thing I kind of walked away from after, I mean, it was my first time kind of seeing it and being in depth with it. There's a lot of room. There's a lot of room to grow in the Walmart space. Have you done anything with the Walmart yet? Or, uh, you know, kind of what's did, your feel on that whole scenario? Yeah, I did something with Walmart in 2016, 2017 when they first started, but I'm not doing anything right now. Uh, back then I tried it and it just was a waste of time um, for me. I mean, some, uh, but now I'm, you know, like you said, Carrie, there's a lot of people that are having pretty good success there. I know some people are doing better on Walmart than they are on, on, on Amazon. I just have not personally taken the time to actually go over and, and do it. Um, you know, Amazon, Walmart's pretty picky on who they take, so not just anybody can sign up. I mean, I, I'm, I'm invited, uh, but it's just, I'm just saying, you know, if you're listening out there, it's not just, you got to typically have a track record uh, on Amazon or somewhere else for them to take you. But once they do, there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. And it, it does seem to be growing. Uh, it, it's still pretty small compared to, to Amazon, but there, there are some niches over there that, that are wide open. Uh, and and I, I think uh, it's a different type of buyer. It's a different type of uh, mentality. So you can't just take your Amazon listing and just throw it up on Walmart. You've got to modify it for, for that, that customer base and that, that, that avatar. Uh, but uh, and it's a great place to, uh, to test. You know, I'm hearing stories of people that get into walmart.com, their product does good. And then the buyers uh, in Arkansas are like, hey, these products are doing good. Let's have a talk and let's test them in the stores. So it's a great doorway to get into the stores and the stores, if you can get into to all their stores, I mean, usually they start with a small test and they, they ramp it up, but that can be huge. Uh, that could be way bigger than anything you do online with Walmart. Absolutely. A uh, question did come in. I'm just going to summarize. It was a little bit long. And I think what they're trying to ask was prior to like coming into Q4, uh, what's your kind of thoughts on using either a micro influencer or influencer around your product to maybe try to get some of that momentum going before you get into the Q4 uh, timeframe? I think it's anytime, whether it's Q4 or anytime, influencers can be good, micro influencers can be good. But the problem is probably 95% of the people that try to, to use influencers fail. You know, there's a lot of people that teach this, hey, you got to build an audience, you got to have influencers, have them promote your product. Uh, most of it doesn't work because they, they don't do it right. Uh, or they're, they're targeting the wrong people or the people aren't passionate or are not behind the product. So if you do it right, it can have great success. You know, there's, there's some people like on TikTok right now, if I was doing... If I, uh, so this person looking at influencer and stuff, I wouldn't be messing with Facebook hardly at all um, on, on that. Um, I would be focusing on TikTok right now, uh, it's especially if your product is aimed at someone that's under 34 uh, or 35 years old. Uh, I would be I would be really focusing on TikTok. If it's if you if you're selling something that's a like cream for uh, senior women, TikTok's not your place. Uh, <laughs> Pinterest, that's Pinterest, the truth. Pinterest or uh, some some place like that, maybe Instagram. Uh, but more Pinterest probably uh, would be your place. But make sure your tar the who your target audience is in that that social media platform predominantly. But TikTok, uh, there's some people doing really really good on TikTok uh, with with unboxings and and there's so, some uh, influencers that are, are teaching that that are I mean that are that are promoting Amazon products that are that are, that are cleaning up. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me, uh, uh, yeah, actually, Yoni, a, a question came in for you. So uh, actually, somebody was asking about, uh, and I think it was related back to the Walmart, is Gatita going to eventually start doing uh, refunds and reimbursements for Walmart? 
So yeah, we do have our eyes on it. The thing is, uh, compared to what's going on on FBA, it's uh, you know how they say a drop in the bucket. It's not even a drop in the ocean compared to volume. So there's not enough data for us to actually uh, need to build anything. Uh, but we have our eyes on it, and as it snowballs and matures, uh, we're definitely going to be in that uh, realm to to help out the sellers. There you go. One thing I would also be careful of, and this is where you know if you're not using Gatita, you may want to consider using Gatita. It is right. You know, I shipped in. Uh, some products back in October, uh, they're four seasonal products. Um, and they, they're kept wall calendars actually for one of my companies. And uh, every single one of those has different measurements uh, in, in Amazon. They, they the, the correct measurement uh, is 12 inches by 12 inches by 0.2 inches. Um, and the correct fee, Amazon FBA fee, should be about $3.50 roughly. Uh, plus Amazon, it's a $20 item, so it's 15% commission uh, on top of that. So I should be paying someone in the neighborhood of five, six bucks uh, total out the door. All in, yeah. All, all in. Well, some of mine are, one of them is $7. One of them is $12. Uh, one of them is $9. One, they're all over the place. These guys can't measure. And then something happened where they self-corrected one of them, but they still corrected it wrong. They took it from $11 to $8. But so if you're not watching that, that's going to add up because some of these are selling a couple hundred units a day. So that's, you know, 500 bucks a day. Uh, per item right now that, that I'm losing. And, and it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I use Katita. So at some point here later this month, I'm going to say, go get them. Uh, you know, I don't want to mess with it just right in the second, because I don't want to screw something up where <laughs> during the holidays or I've had, I've had bad luck before where I, I, I filed a claim with Amazon 2017. I was doing a uh, 15, 20 grand a day on these Apple watch docs that I developed and just doing gangbusters. And this is before Katita existed. Uh, or any of the other tools out there that do a similar thing, and and someone posted on Facebook, they're hey, you get if you here's how you can write to Amazon and get some money back if they if they screw up, if they lose some stuff uh, on your shipment, or if they, they mismeasure or whatever. And I, I had a shipment that came out shipped in 500, and the Amazon said they only got 490. And so I was like, well, I, I followed the steps and said, hey, you owe me for these 10. Uh, well, Amazon, what they did is they suspended the listing uh, to do what's called a bin check. And I was like, what the heck is a bin check? Uh, and I go, oh, we got to go check two different warehouses and, you know, do a verification or some sort of audit. So in the meantime, we can't have stuff moving around. I'm like, forget the 10. I don't care. Just put the listing back up. You can keep the money. I don't care. Uh, but that cost me. So ever since then, I've been gun shy. Like it's, it's during the middle of the season right now. And if I go in and file a claim, say, hey, you, missed, you, you messed this up. Um, I'm afraid that someone's going to screw up in the computer when they're fixing the measurement and screw something else up. And so I'm like, I'm just going to wait. And then I'll, I'll tell uh, Yanni and the guys, hey, uh, it, it's time. Uh, yeah, when everything is a good time, let us know. The good news is we can go back. And it's not going forward. Right. It's going backwards. So right. time is uh, I actually have it on my calendar. October 5th, 90 days from October 5th is like January 2nd or, or whatever the number, whatever it is. Right. I got. Uh, I try to right. do it before then, a week before then. Great. Nice. We'll there you go. Oh my I God. actually wanted to touch back on the on the influencer yeah. side, uh, uh, Kevin. So um, you said, you know, you got to find the right influencer. And, you know, it has to make sense if it's TikTok, Pinterest, stuff like that. But the, the strategy is to get like one or to get maybe a variety of them. Does it make wait, wait. any difference? Don't answer that. We got to take a quick commercial break. Kevin's going to answer that right when we come back. Suspense. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at katita.com slash sellernomics. All right. So go ahead, Yoni. Yoni was asking more about the micro influencers. And then I do want to kind of uh, not wrap up, but want to make sure to talk a little bit about going into Q1. Uh, maybe some tips from Kevin, but go ahead, Yoni. What was your question again? Yeah, the question is on the strategy with influencers. Do you think the strategy should be just pick one or two or you kind of create a variety of 10, 20 and keep engaging with them? Any any thoughts on that? I would go after as many as, many as you can. Hmm. You know, and that's, some, that's one of the things someone asked about the, the launching. Uh, earlier, that's some of the things that some of the, these launch services, some of them are, are switching to kind of an influencer type of program where if they had people that were buying on the search find buying getting rebates before, all, most of those people have social media accounts. So a lot of those people are, they're not big influencers, you know, in the space. So it doesn't always have to be a in, big influencer. It can be, uh, you know, your family, it can be your friends, it can be, they have influence too. It's just like when you're going to a movie, you know, it's people say, hey, you should go see the new Spider-Man movie and you take the recommendations of your friends. The same thing with products. So you can actually use your own network. And if they post it, say, hey, uh, my buddy Kevin just launched uh, his new garlic press. Check it out on Amazon if anybody needs one for Christmas. Yeah, you're probably not going to sell a whole lot uh, off of them. They're not some big influencers going to sell 100 of them you know, in a couple of days. But if one or two people 
uh, buy that, uh, you know, some of them zero will buy, but one or two, and you got 50, 100 people that do that, that adds up and it adds up and Amazon loves it. Uh, from uh, the traffic coming from social media. Uh, if you give them a canonical URL, you can help you with your rank, or if you give them, if you're part of the attribution uh, and you get that 10% back, there, there's so many things you can do there. Uh, it's just, people are so used to this instant gratification. I wanna launch and be on page one tomorrow. Uh, it, it, you gotta get out of that mindset. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. And so let's, uh, let's talk about a few tips for uh, either new seller. You know what, I'm gonna switch this up a little, Kevin. You know, I always like throw kind of curveballs at you. Kevin's done a lot of uh, presentations, been to a lot of, let's say, uh, where he's giving advice and and telling people how to sell and everything. There's got to be a question that comes up all the time from either new sellers or even existing sellers. Maybe give us your top two questions you always hear and an uh, answer for each of those. And I'm sure they're probably long ones, but go ahead, Kevin. Oh yeah, probably the number one one is how much money do I need if I want to sell on Amazon? What, how much money does it take to start selling on Amazon? And the answer is it depends. I mean, it, it, to do it right does take to, to do it right and a little bit quicker it takes money. But you could start with you know, there's people in Pakistan. There's a huge group of like seven, eight hundred thousand people called enablers in Pakistan. A lot of them are VA, some of them are Amazon sellers. They're starting with five hundred or thousand bucks. Some of these guys, some of them start a little bit more. And, and it's just what are they trying to do? But if for a thousand dollars you can get some really niche down product you're going to sell a couple a day it's not going to be some gangbuster runaway multi-million dollar company really fast but for them that can be life-changing you know if they can make five hundred dollars profit a month off their amazon business or a thousand dollars that's huge i mean because the average wage over there's three four hundred bucks a month so if they can make a thousand dollars a month in profit that's life-changing for their family for us, uh, you know, me and Yanni, that's a trip to the grocery store or something because we don't pay attention to the price. Like said, I got three kids. You better know. Yeah, it. That's right. That, that, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's not that much. So it, it depends on what your goals are. Uh, and so I think a lot of people get into this and they, they, they want more instant gratification. They want to quit their job that they're working now and do this and be able to support themselves overnight. And that's difficult to do unless you come into it with a lot of money. And so the amount of money you need depends. You can start small. I recommend five to twenty thousand. It would be, or more, would be ideal, depending on what you're doing. But you can do it with less. So that's probably the number one question. The number two question is probably: Is is this Amazon selling on Amazon? Is it jump the shark? Is it just uh, what's? Should we just be doing Shopify? Should we be doing something else? And the answer is, is no. Just like Yanni just said, uh, Walmart's a drop in the bucket compared to, to Amazon. Amazon is still the big grill in the room. Sixty, depending on who you listen to, 60, 70 percent of e-commerce. Sales go through Amazon. Amazon is still the place to be. Uh, and is it is it competitive? Yes. In some categories, extremely competitive. Uh, but is there a great opportunity there? Yes, there's a tremendous opportunity. It's only getting better. It doesn't mean it's getting easier, uh, but it's it, the opportunity is getting better. And if you approach it with the right mindset and it's a true business opportunity, it, there's no better place in the world to launch a product than, than on Amazon. And then the probably the follow-up question to that would be, well, should we just have all our eggs on Amazon? Should we be selling on Walmart and Shopify and all these other places? And the answer is eventually yes, but I would recommend not doing that too soon. Uh, don't mm. focus on Amazon, master Amazon. And sometimes it's better to expand to Amazon Canada from the US or Amazon Europe than it is to start a Shopify site because you already know the systems, you already know everything. Um, and it depends on the traffic is already there on Amazon. You're taking advantage of all these eyeballs that are already there. If you start something else, your own Shopify site, and like I'm just gonna run, you're gonna have to run Facebook ads. You kind of have to get the eyeballs there, and that's expensive. People complain that Amazon. I just saw some report. Someone, some media person was trying to make a story about Amazon is screwing small business owners, taking thirty to forty percent of, uh, of the sales price, and that's just screwing people. And it's not fair. It's totally fair. Go try to do that on your on, on your on your own uh, on Shopify and see what you got to pay for ads to get those leads. See see what the conversion rate is. You know one or two percent instead of eight to ten percent or you know it, it's it's totally fine uh you know and amazon is raising some fees next year and you know that's just part of it it's that's business you know and you gotta adapt with that i want to add on to that kevin because something you just said right there you know also remember who's shipping that product for you as part of that scenario who is storing your product in the warehouse even though you're paying some if you had to go get your own warehouse hire your staff to ship everything and package it and all that start thinking about what those fees cost and kevin knows i'm old school i've come i did 20 years of e-commerce when there was no shop there's no shopify there was no amazon i had to have a warehouse staff people to you know run google ads things like that 
there's a lot more cost involved than people think. So realistically, your you know your fees you're paying are up there, but they would be possibly even worse if you're doing it yourself. So and you can sell some you can sell 500 units or something and test it at the scale of a of a someone that's selling a million units. You can't do that on your own Shopify site. You get to you get to pipe into this massive scale, this massive machine at, at a little small uh, level that you that just would be impossible somewhere else. Yeah. So um, we're going to wrap up here real quick. Uh, I've got one more question that did come in for you, Kevin. And then I'll have Yoni also uh, pop in and and if he has any last uh, few comments to add in. Uh, it is kind of early. We're not quite to Christmas yet. But a person was asking, do you see... Like, is this year better than last year is kind of what they're asking. Have you seen that so far? Ha, does it look like your like sales are better this year than not the previous year? Yes. For me personally, yes, they are. I am up about 20, 25% this year. And I expect that to continue. You know, one thing is you, you, start, you were asking a question earlier about the first quarter. Remember, the first quarter is still good on Amazon. A lot of people think, oh, well, Christmas is here. Hanukkah's passed. Christmas is here. That's it. Uh, um, no, uh, January is really good. Um, especially on Amazon, because not only for products that are New Year's resolutions, you know, fitness products and supplements and stuff do really well, but everything in general does well after Christmas because people get gift cards for Christmas, Amazon gift cards. You get cash bonuses from work. Yeah, they get bonuses from work. They they are, they got something as a gift that was bought on Amazon. You know, Amazon allows you to return stuff until January 31st. It was bought from October 1st. So they got something as a gift. Like, I don't want this. I'd rather have something else. So there's a lot of exchanges and they're exchanging some other seller's thing for your thing. Uh, so keep that in mind that January can be a very, very good month on Amazon, almost as good as December in some cases. Yeah. Go ahead, Johnny. Yeah, I see here just to tweak uh, the, the question here. So in terms of impressions, you see, the, uh, you know, for, for your, in your case, a drop of impressions, but increase in uh, conversion rate compared to last year? Um, seeing a drop in, uh, no, I'm not really seeing a drop in impressions, no. Same amount of impressions, uh, conversion rate, rate pretty much the same. Back. Conversion rates actually might be slightly lower, um, you know, a point lower or something probably right now than last year, year over year. But uh, there's more people looking. Mm. Got more eyeballs. So more eyeballs, even though the drop of uh, conversion rate, the more eyeballs covers up for the but drops. Overall, you're, you're up 25%. Yeah, the 1% drop doesn't worry me. That's just, you know, fluctuations. Got it. Yeah. All right. Yoni, any last tips for anybody on this holiday season or going into Q1? Yeah, just connecting what to uh, Kevin was saying. Amazon is a, an amazing testing ground, uh, testing ground and entry gate to the world of e-commerce. Uh, so, you know, focus your resources there. Um, be a student of the game. Keep on tweak, uh, keep on tweaking, and and keep your eyes and ears open to uh, to uh, what's working, what's not working. It's hyper dynamic, and that's it. Wishing everybody a successful end of the year, uh, an amazing start for 2022. Uh, that's it. Hard work all forever pays. So you know, keep it up. Yeah, and Kevin, go ahead. If you have any uh, last things you want to, uh, you know, advice you want to give or anything you'd like to plug, we're more than happy to uh, do that. No, I'm just saying uh, good selling out there and good luck, everybody. Hope you have a great uh, holiday season. Be safe uh, and take a little time for yourself and enjoy it. Don't uh, don't just work. Yeah, and yep. I'm, I'm going to give, I, I do have to give Kevin a little plug. So Billion Dollar Seller Summit, never been to it. My first time was this year. Had an amazing time, amazing information. Let me tell you, I and I can't even talk about it. I promised I would, <laughs> Kevin. There, you can't. We won't even talk about it. But uh, let me tell you, some some of the, you know a lot of people will say like oh, a lot of stuffs recycled and things like that. Kevin, make sure everything's fresh, new. So if you're a seller that's looking for a show, and not that there's not other amazing ones out there, don't get me wrong. But uh, I had a chance to go to Kevin's billion dollar seller summit and it was absolutely incredible there's two of them coming Class up action. next year there's two of them coming mm -hmm. up keep your mind the one is virtual i believe it's in february or yeah, march yep. and february yeah, february. february and the october. physical one in austin texas which i love is uh august. is gonna be in august, august. sorry august august yep. yep yep and katita is a sponsor so uh thank you guys for support all your support you've been there since uh the very first one I'll yeah absolutely you. but it was an amazing event if you get a chance to go it's well worth it and some great information Kevin, thanks again uh, for coming on this holiday special edition uh, Solonomics podcast. I will be getting Kevin on next year, uh, just me and him, and we'll be talking about tips and all kinds of facts, and we'll probably go old school again like we did before because <laughs> some of those old school things still work. That's, That's the right. cool thing. So, well, thanks again, Kevin and Yodi, for being on. I do appreciate it, and you all have a good day. Take care, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this week on the Sellernomics Podcast. Special thanks to our sponsor, Gatita. 
Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. Be sure to join us again next week for more great tips on how to grow your business. And thanks again for listening.